Hi there, today I want to talk about something cool I recently discovered regarding Elementor and Elementor pop-ups. For this tutorial, if you want to follow along, you need some things. You need Elementor, Elementor Pro, and you need Polylang. So the only buy viable here is Elementor Pro. We'll create our own custom pop-up trigger. Let me show you what I mean. So over here I have an Elementor pop-up. This is just a generic pop-up. I haven't styled it or anything. I just took it from the library. And when you save a pop-up, you have display conditions, you have triggers, and you have advanced rules. Display this pop-up on the entire site. I will trigger it on page load within zero seconds, so instantly. And in here, in the advanced rules, I have added my own rule. As you can see, I have here show in languages. And I have two languages on my website, namely English and Dutch. A -N 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 -L, and I can put this on and off. So in here I have A -N selected, so English only. So when I save and I go to my website, I am the Dutch version of my website right now. And I refresh, I don't see the pop-up. The pop-up never comes. But when I go to the English version of the website, voila, there's the pop-up. How does this actually work? Because right now Elementor doesn't have a standard API to make this work. So I was digging around and I was reading through the comments on the GitHub repo, through the issues, through the pull requests and I found that yeah, it's first of all not supported but the injection controls which we use to create widgets are also used to create these pop-up triggers namely over here take a look at this code this is the timing class which builds up the pop-up timing let me quickly open the core where this is so the modules over here display settings so timing this class builds this screen what we can do here is we have a name which is pop-up timing and in here we start a control section timing if we go to our injection controls we can see that in here targeting specific elements we can target elementor element stack name section id and then we have four hooks the stack name is our get name over here and our hook is the section id over here timing so by go by doing elementor element pop-up timing slash timing before section start, we can inject our own controls in this interface. That's pretty neat, if you ask me. Let's start with our plugin. So first of all, we need, I created a folder Elementor custom pop-up in my plugins folder. In here, I will create the entry plugin file, which will be Elementor custom pop-up.php. I will need a composer package. I'm just gonna do new file, composer.json, and I'm gonna paste some stuff here, voila. This is just some base, some bottle based composer. Uh, now I'm going to do composer dump to create a vendor folder. In my composer, I say I link this namespace to the source folder. So we also need a source folder. And that's about it. So now that we have that, we need to add some code to our main plugin file. In here, open the PHP tags. We will need a comment which describes the plugin. I have Elementor custom pop up with my name. Then we'll do some voodoo magic to make sure this file is never accessed directly on the server. In here, we will need to require vendor autoload. We are going to use Composer to handle our dependencies that's because we're going to use a little bit of OOP to create this. And now I'll create my main plugin to also do class Elementor custom pop-up. And this will need a constructor public function construct, no parameters, and we'll do new Ajax endpoints and new poly lang trigger controls. All right. Only thing left is now to create those classes. So in our source folder, Ajax endpoints.php. And I'm going to just copy the name because I'm lazy and I don't want to make typos. And we'll have these both classes. Let's quickly create the classes like this, like this. Ajax endpoints, empty constructor for now, polylang and empty constructor. All right. One thing I quickly want to do is uh, we don't want this class to be instantiated more than one time because we don't need it more than one time. So I'm going to make it into a singleton. So for that matter, I'm going to do public static get instance. And instead of newing the class up, we'll just get the instance which will new up. And if this class is ever called again, we will get the same instance. I forgot to tell you, because we are getting an instance which we are linking to the class properties instance, we need to create that property. So in here we do private static instance. Now we will be able to link the instance to that class property. At the moment, our main plugin file is not able to instantiate these classes because we haven't told Composer yet in what namespace namespace they live so in here we'll add the namespace which will just be in sync with 
what we defined here, so the PSR4, which will link to the source folder. So in here we'll add the Bells and Arna, have some Elementor pop-up because we are in source. And then we can do import class, import class, and this will use the correct imports. At the moment, we have created a skeleton for our plugin, but we haven't put any meat into it. So let's start doing that now. The first thing I want to do is create the polylink trigger controls. For the polylink trigger controls, we will get back to the part in the beginning of the video where I talked about the injection controls. So in the constructor, we will add action, elementor, element. Do you remember? Pop-up timing, timing. These are the strings uh, that refer to the place where we want our injection controls to be injected. We'll do it after the section end and we'll then run an add controls function, which we still have to write. So in here we'll do public function add controls. This will accept an element and arguments. All right. So the first thing I want to do is I want to make sure we are in edit mode whenever we are injecting these controls. So the first thing is if we're not in edit mode, we return. If elementor is not active, we return. If this function doesn't exist, PLL languages list, which actually checks if polylang is active, we return. So this makes sure that everything is running, that we don't generate any fatal errors. Then we need to tell Elementor where to inject the controls. So we grab the element, we'll do start injection. So it will be at the after position. I will do it off browsers. One moment, voila. So let's go over this one more time. I'll do add action Elementor element pop-up timing timing. We see here, pop timing is the name, timing is the control section. And then I'll do element start injection at after of browsers. So if we scroll down here, We'll see a lot of these uh, groups which are registered. We search for browsers. You can see browsers over here. So what, I, what I'm doing is after this, I'm injecting my own control. All right. So first we will need to add an heading. An heading is like the name schedule date and time is a heading. So I'll do element add control polyline heading. The type will be controls manager controls manager heading and the label will be translate will of course show languages elementor pro this will be the language domain let me quickly check okay so now we won't be able to okay that's wrong no semicolon there we won't be able to control use controls manager like this we need to import it i'm not sure if this is gonna work no it isn't because why isn't it working why isn't it working mm -hmm. i think Ah, yes, it's because I'm not in the working space here. I need to add it manually. So I do look, Elementor Controls Manager, and I think I made a typo. Ah, it's Manager. So if this works, we should see something here. Undefined variable element. Elements. Voila. Let's see. Now we have show in languages here, but we have no yes or no and no options. But we did something, which is nice. Once we have done that, we need to instantiate some, instantiate some variables. First, we need the default languages, which is PLL languages. This will just get all the languages in an, in an array from Polyline. Then we need the pop-up display settings. And do not make any typos. I'm just going to copy paste that here. So this will return an array, get post meta, get the ID, elementor pop-up display settings, and an end to get the last index of the array. And then we'll instantiate an MTRA chosen languages. These are the languages that the user will have chosen. Next, we need to check if the user has already chosen any languages. If yes, we need to put these into the variable, otherwise not. So we'll do if pop-up display settings timing. So we fetch the settings from the database and we'll check if it has a timing. Uh, and we'll check if it's not null. If this is the case, we'll do if not array e exists active languages. This is an array key we will create. Now in here we'll do again in this. If if the array key active languages does not exist in pop-up display settings timing, then we'll do chosen languages is pop-up display settings timing active languages. Else it will be null like this. Yeah, it's a long line, but we'll get there. Now we need to make sure if the chosen languages are empty, we just need to use the default languages. So if empty chosen languages, but I'm not sure chosen languages is default languages or no and then we'll need to get the actual language options so we'll do language options it's an empty array for each default languages as e lang language options lang is lang 
This will loop over all the default languages and put the language in the language array. So I can understand the previous bit might be hard to follow. That's why I written some console log statements, which has locked all the values of these uh, variables to the log over here on the right. So the default languages are a and an NL. That's logical. Then we get the pop-up display settings from Elementor pop-up display settings in the data bank. At the moment, this only contains triggers, which with a page load of yes, and timing, which is an empty array. So I've also added if pop up settings display timing is set normally this is not necessary but i've added it anyways let's make this a bit bigger so if poppy displays timing is no which is not the case then we'll do uh, if exists active languages this key does not exist so chosen languages will be null so if it's empty null. this is another check and then we'll generate the language options we create we convert this so 0 en 1 nl to a n a n nl nl this is what this piece of code actually does and this is just so we can fill the elementor control section over here with the data we don't have this active languages yet this is a control we are going to make right now we just need to add two more controls let me quickly close this debug statements so we'll do element add control polyline this will be of type controls manager switcher this will has a class with a group toggle and these options will be available in the front end so let me close this control sorry i'm wrong this is correct but we will need one more control and this is element at control active languages does it tell you something and this will be an array of type select to end this will select multiple options the default will be the array values of chosen languages so if a user has chosen languages, this will be in the, in the field and the options will be the language options is the array we defined here. Now to end things, we need to do element and injection. This will stop the injection. And now if we refresh, you will see that we have created our show languages. We can change and save and we can set it yes or no to put it on or off. Nice. Okay, so now we have created the whole control structure, which saves the values in the database. So if language you have chosen or if it's on or off but to make this work we also need to actually be able to call this stuff from the database so in our ajax endpoints i'm gonna do add action wp ajax no prev patch pop up timing triggers and this will call a function this patch pop up timing triggers and we'll also have to do this for the no for the ones without the no prev and then we'll need to create this function so public function patch pop up timing triggers and what this is gonna do is first we're gonna get the metadata so get post meta post ID post ID. I'll show you where we where we get this from. This will be posted to this function via an, via an Ajax call. We'll get the Elementor pop up display settings, and then we'll send a JSON. So WP send JSON. Current lang is ALL. Current language. All right, and the metadata is and meta. It's wrong, and then we'll just die. WP die. Close the connection. All right, now we have our endpoints. Now we need to write some JavaScript. So I'm going to create an assets folder. Inside this folder, I'm going to create a JS folder and I'm going to add a file pop up display.js. We need to include and queue this file. So, in our custom pop up, down below our get instance function, we'll do public function and queue pop up display. And I'm just going to paste something here. Uno monumento. We'll check if in editor mode. And if we are in editor mode, we enqueue a pop up display script which we just created. Now we need to make sure to add it in our constructor so this function is actually running so add action wp footer this nq pop up i want to make sure the javascript i enqueued actually works so in the javascript file i have console.locked hey it works and if i refresh my page in the console i should see hey it works nice now it's time to do some javascript hocus pocus so first of all we'll do jquery document on and then we're going to listen for uh, an event. Every time a pop-up opens in Elementor, Elementor fires an event. It's Elementor. I'm going to make so much typos here. Elementor pop-up show. If we receive that event, I want the event. I want the ID and I want the instance. And let's do a short function. Voila. Let's console it. Log the instance. You can show you in an instance. In an instant. First of all, we need to make sure that the pop-up... We, we don't want to remove the pop-up in edit mode. And we can do that via if is instance is edit true then we'll return so if the 
instance is in edit mode will just return and nothing below this line of code will ever run. The first thing I do now is I'm going to do jQuery. I'm going to capture the pop-up. So this is, will be Elementor pop-up modal dash and then plus ID. I'm getting this ID from the, the show uh, event dot high. What this will do is now the pop-up will always be hidden when I load the page. We'll, we'll start with that. And then we'll fire an Ajax. It will be jQuery Ajax. The URL will be just admin Ajax. You can copy this from me. And the type will be post. Let's capitalize it. And then we'll need some data. The action which we're going to send, which is actually pretty logical, logical, is this part. Fetch pop-up triggers. And I told you I was going to tell you how we got this post post ID. The post ID is the ID of the pop-up. So the ID we get over here. This Ajax request is successful. We capture the response. Let's console open log that response to show you what's in there. And now it is two S's and a comma. Now we need to do some stuff. I'm going to paste this in so I don't make any typos. So if active languages is in response.meta.timing and response.meta.timing.active languages includes the current language, or if response.meta and response.meta.timing does not have polyline, we just show the pop-up again. So what this actually does, it's very simple. Page loads, we hide the pop-up. If certain conditions are met, we show the pop-up. What are those conditions? Either polylang is closed if we, the switch is off. This, this, this line is switch off or on. I'm referring to this switch. If it's no, we always show the pop-up again. If it's yes, it depends on this line above. This is which languages has user chosen. Based on these actions, the pop-up will show or won't show. Make sure you type fetch. I had edge. It needs to be fetch, because otherwise the Ajax request doesn't work. I have found another typo. If we go back to our polylang trigger controls.php file, I have added the control activate languages. This has to be active languages, otherwise it's not going to work. All right, now we are able to play around with our pop-up. So let's go to advanced rules. Let's just set it off, only trigger it on page load. This should load the pop-up on every page. So in Dutch, yes, we see the pop-up. In English, we see the pop-up, nice. But if we go to advanced rules again, I always say, I only want to show it in Dutch. Let's save. We're English now. Don't show it. And if we go to Dutch, we show the pop-up. This is pretty awesome, isn't it? Thanks, guys. That's it for today. If you have liked the video, please like and subscribe. It helps me a lot. Uh, I try to make informative videos. My videos are not as consequent as possible, that, but that's because I really want interesting topics to talk about and not just very generic topics. So... Sometimes it takes quite a while before I find something intriguing which I want to make a video about. So it's worth the wait, but sometimes you'll have to wait. Thanks. Peace out. See ya.